Melissa Bevent has been playing a dangerous game, rising the kindred ranks. And now she finds many daggers at her back, many fangs at her neck. A murder plot that she is very much aware of is continuing in the shadows. Many of her own court have already been found to be a part of the scheme. Yet the one who is organizing it all, the one that is pulling the strings, remains unseen. And so Melissa has but one choice now. Those of her own court that now reside in her dungeon will have to answer. Melissa Bevent will make them speak. Kia ora, Legionnaires, Rikon here and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3, Princes of Darkness. Now we had quite a quick introduction there and that's because there is so much to do today. And to begin with, we have four conspirators that are now in prison, some of which we would once have called our friend. Yet now we have but one option, torture. With that torture, we may be able to find out who is behind this plot here. Now, thankfully, it has kind of gone down a lot. The success was really high in the last episode, but we've managed to kind of capture quite a few people and we've probably scared quite a few people off in the process. The secrecy has gone down, which is good, but it's very good that the success chance has dropped from where it was because it was really high beforehand. So, yeah, we might not have to torture all of them, but I feel like we should be torturing some. And you know what? We are going to start off with Akos, who is considered a powerful vassal. But Akos, well, you kind of brought this upon yourself, didn't you? Now, unfortunately, we are going to have to spend some of that piety, the piety that we've been so desperately trying to gain more of recently. But yes, we have little option. Unfortunately, Pex will lose some um, respect for Missy because I think he might actually have a friendship with Akos here. Yeah, sorry buddy, let's get to it. Now we could look at torturing the others, but I think we're just going to start off with Akos. We're going to see what effect that ends up happening. Why complicate matters? There's nothing like the good old rack. The sound when bones and sinew snap is quite unforgettable, but not as unforgettable as the pain Count Akos is soon to experience. Now obviously as a kindred, you can heal from that over time. Um, yeah, let's see how this goes. It does seem like he's going to be going into critical stress there. It doesn't seem like we've gotten any secrets from that. He is still trying to ransom us at the moment. That isn't going to happen. We could also look at holding court. Hmm. We'll just give it a little bit more time before we make up our mind. And we've had nothing yet. No other word. So we may have to turn to some of the others. Now, unfortunately, Dante's spouse, uh, the Zemitsi, was plotting against us. Her prowess is fantastic. I would love to be able to maybe try and keep her on our good side if we can. She was plotting to try and kill us though, so that's not great. We have Trifosa as well here. And then of course we have Duke Stephen, who is a really decent Malkavian. Uh, he was our Malkavian primogen, and he is a, he's a duke. I would rather things end, you know, on a good note. So maybe then, okay, Trifosa, you're currently unlanded at the moment. I think you were supplanted by Duke Stefan. So we are going to go and torture you and we'll see how that turns out for us. Okay, ooh, truth or torment. Uh, let's see here. No, 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 I have information. Baroness Leonita has intimate relations with Dionysus. Okay. I mean, thank you, but I don't know if we're quite done with you yet. I mean, that, that's just going to give us a lover's secret. I mean, do we continue? I think we continue. We continue and we see if anything else comes of it. At the same time here, it does look like we can demand some payments here. Duke Bukefos. Now, I believe we have this hook on him because we managed to manipulate him somewhat. He is fourth generation and, uh, well, we need a fourth generation kindred to feed upon eventually. There are other fourth generation kindred around though, so they would be better options. I mean, he is very 
upset with us in general. He desires a lot of the territory that we do currently have. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we just need to keep on disrupting schemes and trying our best to figure out um, who is behind all of this. A demand of an artifact. Okay, what exactly are you seeking here? The stag antler. Why, why do you want this? And who are you to us? You're our grandchild. Okay. Hmm. Do we really want to hold on to that antler forever? It's going to break soon. You know what? Sure. It's not legitimately yours, but I will grant it to you for a little bit of opinion bonus. There. Enjoy that stag antler that we rightfully earned by killing the stag before you were even uh, kindred. <laughs> or maybe even before you were born. I am not so certain. But in other news, I think it's time for us to go to war. Yes, the Duchess Helena of Troy, who is, you know, getting towards being 3,000 years old. We are going to be making some moves against her. She's a fourth generation kindred who diabolized her own sire. So why don't we kind of like carry on that tradition? Now she's not our sire, but a little bit of diablery there. But of course, for us to do that, we will need to try and capture her in this coming battle. So it won't be easy. But with how many troops we now have available to us, I mean, most of those are from allies, but I think without our allies, we are still going to be able to win this war pretty quickly. Of course, Melissa will probably be safer staying at home, but when has Melissa ever truly been safe? And we have arrived, and there are some troops there, troops that she is choosing to lead. Goddess among mortals. Is that so? Okay, well, we captured someone and we also captured the Sardinian war banner. Okay, um, let's add it to our collection. Of course, of course. And we did capture an enemy combatant there, a Zamitzi. 14 prowess. Let's just have a look and see where we're at with our champions here because we can have 25 champions, 25 knights. Pex, you're a little injured there, buddy. And oh, let's stop time from rolling there. Okay, so some of our weakest champions are around about 13 prowess at the moment. So we could either look at ransoming, which it doesn't look like that's going to happen, or we could try to negotiate a release here and, well, recruit you. You would lose some opinion, but you'd be able to serve us as a champion. And I'm good with that. Let's negotiate that release. Ah, we have just finished bestowing some royal favor here. And I think we're probably going to go off of that now and just go to domestic affairs in general because, well, our general opinion is not super great right now because of, you know, the whole diablery exposure. But hey, would you look at that? We've finished the siege here. Unfortunately, we didn't get any prisoners. Now, I do believe that Helena should still be with this army here, so it gives us one last chance to potentially capture her. Cross your fingers. Okay, we captured someone, but not her. That is unfortunate. And zero prowess? Yeah, you're just a mortal. Well, that isn't going to really help us at all. So we could wait here. We could wait until she tries to recover her army, recover some of the territory that's here. But we're probably going to have to leave the territory to be able to do that. I and mean, we can walk away for a moment or two here and see if she does try and bring anyone else back. Oh, and our child had just lost a war. Okay, well, that's unfortunate. Um, ha, ah, House of Tremere. So... <laughs> Our childer here was making some moves to some territory from the House of Tremere, probably just across the river here if I had to take a guess. It's nice to see that they're trying to take territory and they're not even involving us in these wider wars. So, I mean, good for them. Sucks that you lost, but you're still alive. I mean, we've given it a little bit here. We are losing gold every single month. I don't think we want to risk it. We don't want to wait any longer. So we are going to enforce our demands to Helena here. And just like that, she no longer has that territory. You are landless. We could invite you to our cool. <laughs> uh, pay for your expenses. I mean, you would very nearly come and join us at our court, which would be fantastic. That would be very, very good. I mean, okay. Okay, we could try. Maybe try to mesmerize. 100% chance of working? I somehow doubt that. 
but it looks like we can do that in addition to everything else that we're doing right now, so why not? Let's try and mesmerize Helena. Uh, we will disband our army here, and now we need to look at divvying out some of this territory. Where do we want it to go? Um, Cagliari here only has a development of nine. I mean, it's not bad. Also, the territory is like, it's okay, but I think we're going to want to have someone that can take care of um, Sardinia themselves. So looking at everyone here, we're going to sort by relevance because we're not just going to give this away to someone that is of our blood. We want someone that we know is going to be responsible. And actually having a look at this list here, I think we're going to go with Marcellius. He is a La Sombra. He was originally from Sicily and a part of the greater Sea of Shadows. He came back to us. He has great prowess. He has good stewardship. So I think he could be a really good option here. He's gallant, a formidable banneret. You know what? Let's give you this territory and hopefully start to try and win you over. Plus 58. That's good. You're grateful, and I think you will be for a while there, sir. So enjoy your time in Sardinia, and we're going to try and see if we can secure some more territory for you. Uh, let's see. Uh, fabricate a claim. And we're going to start fabricating down here so we can try and get Orboria just to the north of us here. Because then that will allow us to secure the Sea of Shadows, an empire for Missy's own. And having a look at all the other empires and whatnot across the world here. We can see the spread of things. The followers of Set down here. I feel like we might actually just end up giving this territory away to them. Um, just as a kind of like a peace offering. Like, you know what? We didn't really need this territory. We've been holding on to it for a while. Plus, most of that is Akos's territory. Uh, I actually think it's entirely Akos's territory, apart from Countess uh, Dima here. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, I think we could maybe try and give this territory away to them. We'll see about that. Uh, having a look at the Baronies of Avalon, they've spread a lot, and it looks like they've changed ruler yet again. We have Lord Michael of the Baronies of Avalon, only 58. And I do think he, uh, he does actually come from the Mithras line, but uh, you're a bit removed, really. I mean, he was your grand, great grandsire, actually. So yeah, quite removed. You are seventh generation, 28 prowess, not bad, but everything else here, yeah, I don't know how long he's going to be uh, surviving here for. But in saying that, the baronies have grown bigger than ever. The thieves of the Black Cross have spread quite far as well. The courts of love are entirely gone now. We just have the Grand Court. I'm not even sure if the same players that we had, you know, around near the start are still around, actually. Oh, in saying that, is Hardestat gone? I think Hardestat's gone. Wild. Yeah. Agrippa here is a sixth generation kindred. Do you link back to Hardestat at all? And, and where is Hardestat in all of this? So having a look at uh, Ventru here, we should eventually be able to find Hardestat in this line. Oh, okay. No, he, he's still around. Okay. Just the Duke now within the Fiefs of the Black Cross. I see. Oh, you've kind of, uh, you've fallen a little bit here. Yeah. Quite a bit, it would seem. Oh gosh, and Jeffrey du Temple. I don't recall him looking like this. It's because he's become a white. Okay. Um, so when someone becomes a white, they have lost their humanity altogether. And that's why, um, well, I mean, just in general, once you become a white, yeah, you may not inherit any titles. You may not marry. He's unlanded because he has just become this wild beast. Gosh, how the mighty have fallen. So looking back at the history of the courts of love here, Saliana was murdered. We don't know by who, but yeah, she was murdered. Probably diabolized if I had to take a wild guess. We don't know who did it. <laughs> but some of her kin are still alive even to this date. Within the Grand Court, this is very interesting to see how things have developed over time. Oh, and of course, things are continuing to develop down here. We have another level of fame and a virtuoso performance. My friend Herman is so talented, renowned across the land as a truly brilliant fighter. His swordsmanship is questioned by none. Watching the way he attacks a training dummy in the courtyard with all the vigor and grace of a true master would strike the fear into the hearts of even the wiliest of duelists. Perhaps I should ask him to give me some tips and tricks on that area of expertise. Captain Herman 
19 prowess, not bad. You're from the, the oh, you're a mercenary. I see. Uh, teach me. There is a chance that we may get some prowess or we just gain opinion with them. Or I think I am just as good as they are. We could get some prowess, lose some stress, or I will never be at his level. I mean, like, we're, we're definitely better. We can tell that much. We don't have any stress right now, so let's just try and learn. We gain nothing useful, but, you know, he gets some opinion of us. That's something. Oh, okay, and we can do some learning here. So let's look at doing that. Open-minded will get us one point closer towards apostate. Once we get to there, we have a much higher chance of actually being able to change our faith to something else. Let's have a look at those prisoners, see how all of them are doing. Now, we did get you from the siege down here. I don't think there's going to be much that we can do with you. We could just ransom you for a little bit of gold. You know what? Sure. Let's go and ransom you. Um, the prisoners that we don't care about so much, we could just have a look at getting, you know, weak hooks, see if they eventually get some gold over time, and then we could work on that. Okay, 10 gold from you. Sure, let's go for that. Oh yes, and our prisoner down here, 14 prowess. You are a Zemitsi, and I think you're actually rocking some horns, which is kind of interesting. Now I think 14 prowess, you could still make for a okay champion. So I think we will negotiate a release from you. We could try and blood bond you first though. I think that that's probably a worthwhile um, thing to do before we do release you from prison. So yeah let's go and negotiate your release and we will go and recruit you we won't demand a conversion because well we may very well be converting ourselves before too long so we've got some gold we have you now as a champion and of course we have our actual vassals still here now i think if we were to try and release them uh, eventually down the line we will probably try and blood bond them before we do release them i want to try and keep them around the chance of this murder plot actually succeeding is super, super low right now. So I think we're going to try and keep it that way. We're going to try and see if we can figure out who is the cause of all of this. And then we're going to have to deal with the aftermath. Deal with the people that turned against us. We can either be ruthless, which would raise our tyranny and reduce everyone's uh, opinion of Missy overall. Or we could try to, um, well, work things out in another way so we have a coveted claim here let's see you are coveting something from us okay we could become rivals i mean what's another rival missy has just oh so many um i thought that was dario for a second there a sibling no okay venomous fiend yeah sure you want to try and claim roma from us you can take it from our ashy dead hands oh okay and finally we can add a new chapter to our dynasty's legacy. Now, I did say that I wanted to go for Ashen Knights, but looking down along the rest of the Cate of Legacy, I think we might want to go for that first. Legacy of the Stone Man, count. It kind of sounds fun. Unlocks a special commander trait for every dynasty member with martial education. If we could get there, that would be great. We'd also get more monthly piety and prestige with Closer to Cain, so we're going to pick that up. We're going to continue down the path that Pex put us on, so hopefully that makes them a little bit happy. And an inspiration, creative freedom. This is ridiculous. As the keeper of the Queen's personal collection, I have a responsibility to ensure the quality of your work. You will see it once it's finished, Aileen retorts. You should leave a woman to her work when she's making a box fit for royalty. Um, let's see, Basra will ensure its quality. Um, okay, so that would produce a lower quality item. Stick to your duties or it's time for a breath of fresh air. There is a chance we get a higher quality. It would also cost us a fair bit of prestige to be able to replace Basarab with Aileen as our antiquarian. I don't know how you would be as an antiquarian though. That's the thing. I honestly, I think we're just going to walk out of that. Yeah, walk out and we'll see what happens. Oh, okay. Countess Thomasina has inherited a contract that obliges her more than we have uh, collected. Okay, time to right this wrong. Let's go in and increase those feudal taxes. That's one of the good things about having her look into things that are going on within our court. Now, <laughs> the Rod, you're trying to claim an artifact from us. Okay, the treaties. They are about to fall apart, so I'm happy to give that to him. Let's try and divvy out some of our artifacts to our child so that they feel like they're important as well. And some more disruptions to the box. Bye, humanity woman. Leave me alone. 
The peaceful atmosphere is shattered by Aileen yelling as she storms into the courtyard. Erianwe quickly follows, but stops when she sees me. My liege, please talk some sense into Aileen. I'm trying to help her since I have some expertise that may improve her work. All these people are trying to help. And you know what? There is a chance that it could be better. Come at least hear her out. So I don't think there's a chance for it getting worse with this one. There's a chance for it getting worse with this one. Slightly higher, slightly higher. Um, you know what? Let's try and convince her to listen. And we'll see how that turns out. Okay, it might be of slightly higher quality. That's good. We'll take that. And what is this? Oh, another ransom request. Not yet. Nope, not until we suffer. Well, I was going to say suffer. No, not before we figure out who exactly is trying to murder us. Now, dominating Helena of Troy. This is going to be no small task. No doubt she has defenses. Oh, wow. Um, rouse the blood to try and dominate her. I think this is probably the option that we're going to go for here. It will give us more stress, but I think it would be worthwhile. We also need our stewardship to be higher in general. So we're going to try and see if we can do a blood surge. Uh, let's see. Better with numbers. Now, because our blood potency is so high, we're going to get quite a big boost. We're going to get plus five to our stewardship. So that should help us out significantly, giving us 20 stewardship. That is very nice. And that gives us a 55% chance for us to succeed at this. Okay, resist it. Damn it. Okay, and she loses 100 opinion of us. And the inspiration, at the very least, is realized. That is good. A lovely, a lovely box here. The Bevent Jewelry Casket. Okay, gives us some court grandeur and whatnot. Unfortunately though, Helena, it is going to be more difficult for us to, uh, well, win her over, it would seem. I mean, we could just go straight back into trying to mesmerize. I think the chances of it succeeding are very, very small. We will try, though. And it does look like our journey to learn this new discipline is nearly over. Oh, would you look at that? Landorf just lost a title. Are you unlanded now? You are. Fantastic. Oh, that is so good. So Landorf, for the longest time, the Dark Lord of the Zemitsi, held onto the secret that Missy was a Diablerist. Um, he doesn't have that power over us anymore. Our nemesis, so not just a rival, a nemesis. Missy, for a while, was sleeping with her child. Uh, yeah, okay, Aras, who is currently unlanded as well. And a scheme at court. Yet another. Okay, a 10th generation Toreador. Well, we know what's going to happen there. Throw him in jail. Now, we could try and torture him as well, but I don't think we're going to do that just yet. We have our quest for Daemoninium. Missy has roused her blood and prepared herself to the best of her ability, but the finer points of Daemoninium still elude her. Okay, so we need to try and find a master. Where do we want to try and go? I'm assuming that is the closest place possible for us to uh, learn from. And uh, yeah, you are a Bali. You're an infernalist. And so will we be in time. Travel with the brood of Bevent? Yes, yes we shall. Let's get started. Let's start making our way towards there. And a melancholy perk is available. To the cold-hearted Queen Melissa. Okay. Your scourge, Countess Viorica, has slain my niece in a dishonest brawl. Oh, Viorica would never do such a thing like that. Ha, good one, Viorica. I think that's probably the option that we're going to go with here. Yeah, um, <laughs> yes, that's fine. On my watch, okay. A hostage's safe conduct is the responsibility, the oath of a warden. I make a pact of honor to protect her from harm, but, oh... Adalberta has met a most sticky end at my court. Oh, yes, that does complicate things. Yes. Um, well, we have an alliance now, though, I believe. Uh, yeah. Murdered. Well, oh boy. <laughs> tragic. Oh, so tragic. And, ah, Pex, thank you. We have a claim, but this is a claim for just the territory. I would like to try and see if we could get the whole duchy the whole area under our control It'd be much faster so no for now but continue doing what you're doing pex you will get it i believe in you oh of course we need to have a look at our travel plans don't we right okay we didn't actually uh end up setting that up so let's see we could try to go to a few different destinations along the way it's quite a journey to get there 
we definitely want to stop off there a hundred percent we could also potentially try to go to Anconda here get some learning lifestyle experience i think if we can do that before we leave that would be great so let's go customize the route here so from roma if we go to Anconda along the way and then from there set sail not quite making it to there first i think we'll chuck in another destination here and then from here all right we go back sail through it's only gonna cost us 21 I guess we've got a small group doing it. Now, this is making haste at the moment. There's only a few dangers along the way. We could also go for superior armaments, but that doesn't seem to really reduce the dangers of things too much. That's going to have us arriving on the 27th of August. Of course, if we change it out for make haste, 14th. You know what? I think we're just going to try and make haste here. I'm pretty happy with this. We've got one in our entourage, Stefan. I guess the rest decided not to join us, or they haven't just yet, or they're going to be making their own way. So, oh, no, okay. Shajar will also be here with us. That's good. It's finally time for the brood of Bevent to set out on this journey. Shajar is carrying a pack full of equipment, clearly having made extensive preparations for this journey. Wonderful. We've got Virika, Pex, and Shajar with us. It shall broaden our horizons. It shall indeed. And it looks like we're going to be arriving in Anconda. Wonderful. We've got that lifestyle experience and a derelict ship. The sea is calm and forgiving today, still as a boulder and a powerful wind at our back to boot. So it shouldn't be that still. <laughs> it seems like it'll be an easy day for the rowers below, but then I spot the mangled corpse of a ship buried nose first and some jagged rocks just ahead. There doesn't appear to be any survivors, or the rocks would be no trivial thing to navigate. Yet I feel compelled to go and investigate this mysterious wreck. Okay, we could find something of value or not. I think we try. And just as everyone had assumed, there were no survivors of the wreck. However, the clothes and goods left on the corpses would indicate this was a wealthy trading ship. Among the wreckage, I see exotic goods and luxurious clothing still intact, save for being a little wet. No doubt these items will fetch a good price once we make it ashore. A good find. Okay, we get some gold out of that. Okay, and a winged thief. I am stirred from my relaxing trip across the great blue sea by a sudden shriek. I sprint into the stores below the deck and I'm horrified to find a seagull beside the shredded remains of our supplies. Its feathers stretched thin against its foul bloated belly. In my rage, I could have killed the repugnant winged menace right there, but I'm stopped by my courtier. Hark, stay your hand, you brooding doxy. Don't you know it's bad luck to kill a bird at sea? I feel like you shouldn't be calling us those things, but you know... We could show some mercy, or nothing will stop me from killing that blasted bird. We gain quite a bit of stress because we are sadistic, and we'd end up losing weight as well. Hmm. We could end up being superstitious or end up with a good meal. I think we we try. And okay, the superstitions were abated. We get a good meal. I'm supposing from oh dear, from that seagull. We lost a member of our herd so who does it want us to herdify now Udisa I don't know if we have uh, had a munch on you yet you're deceitful lustful you're a misguided warrior let's just try and hunt you to begin with we can't because we are on a journey okay if we herdify you we could just let you go afterwards ah we don't want to end that scheme so no we're just gonna have to go with a slightly smaller herd for now and we have arrived getting some stewardship Okay, from the kingdom of Halas. And now we're going to travel across land for a little bit before jumping back in our ship. And we are very nearly at our destination. It turns out that our mentor is none other than Euphrasia. We exchange some initial pleasantries. Then the conversation turns to more practical matters. We are ready to learn. And excellent. It looks like everyone will be trying to learn. That's great news. <laughs> Great news, but also, it, I feel like Pex is going to be super conflicted because um, this, we're making a pact with demons here, and he is very much a believer of our way of thinking, and we'll see that as a sin, yet he seems to be going along with it. So, Daemoninium is a discipline very much tied to the Infernal. 
While it's not directly asking you to make a pact with demons, it's as if you are standing very close to the edge of that precipice. The simple fact of trying to understand it has started to change your very nature. You find yourself becoming more callous, easily snapping into snarky or outright cruel comments more than usual. You could make a conscious effort to amend this change or just embrace this new you. I am better than this. Fools. All of them. You gain lashing out at victims for, <laughs> for 10 years. This character will continuously lash out at victims that need their help. So we'd lose a bit of prestige and general opinion or we are better than this to try and control that. Honestly, I think at this stage, Missy would lean into that. 10 years of lashing out? Okay. Dark thoughts. You have finished your early training of Daemoninium and you already want more. The power this discipline hints at is addictive and controls you into embracing your dark nature to unlock all of its secrets. Accepting such a change would likely lead to some complications about the way you rule your domain. But sometimes, the quick and easy answer is the most alluring one. These fools will not slow me down. We would gain a lot of sanguine resonance, unrestrained wrath, and we gain the trait. Um, direct vassal opinion goes down for 10 years. Uh, this character is filled with anger and no one is spared. I need to stay alone for a while. No, I think we go for it. We go for it, Missy. And we have gained the trait. Okay. And we can unlock a new perk, a new sanguine perk. So let's have a look there. It should be amongst it here. Yep, there it is. There it is. And let's have a look at you. Do you also have it? Yes, you do, Shaja. And uh, Pex, did you end up picking it up as well? Uh, he did. He did. And I'm assuming that Viorica also managed to grab it. Let's see, Viorica. Yep. You sure did. Okay, so now um, let's have a look here. Heading across towards Sanguine, we, we do actually have options here. So we could start to pick this up right now. Sense the sin, delve into a mind and amplify a sin to self-destructive levels. Fear of the void increases our natural dread just in general. I think that that's probably what we'd end up going for first. We can also get Mask of Empathy. What will that do for us? It is a discipline power. It's a character interaction that can be used to end the relations of a target. Cut the emotional bonds between people. Wow. Okay. I mean, that could be quite useful. I think for the moment right now, though, we're going to lean into this a little bit. Fear of the void. So just in general, Missy is going to be giving off a aura of dread. Yeah. Okay. Let's get back home. But not before weird whispers. Okay. Famula avoids me more than usual. I think we've seen this before. And yes, she is defaming us. That is unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Now, who are you to us? You are just traveling with us at the moment. You might even be our captain, quite possibly. Let's see here. Hmm. I think we are going to, um, well, we could actually throw her into the dungeon and feed from her. No, no, I think we'll show her how it is. There we go. We win the fight easily and cause her to leave. And now, danger powers toll. Sharp gusts and lingering squalls have kept the ship tipping and rolling for hours as I stand on the deck, clutching firmly onto the mast. I see the chest carrying my skull goblet has come loose. I'm too far to save it, but Stefan is within reach. However, he would be at risk of falling overboard. Okay, um, there is a 100% chance of success here. I think we go for it. <laughs> I think that even if there was a chance of failure here, while Duke Stefan has been very loyal to Melissa, I feel like she would still ask him to grab it. <laughs> we got it back though. We got it back. I, that could be Montano's skull. We, we can't lose that now, can we? Oh, and rare trinkets. Hmm, we could, we could try and claim this. Bejeweled scriptures. I see. We don't have many levels of devotion right now, but it would increase the amount of monthly learning lifestyle experience. We could try to steal it. We'd lose some stress. We don't have any stress right now. I think that we would try to see if we could get away with it. And we fail. That is fine. We're caught red-handed. Well, he must have been rather powerful to be able to wound Melissa. She will naturally heal over time, but I think we're going to do a blood heal just so that she's at her uh, best. 
and a duel demanded right before we make it back home. We have Joffrey of Roma here, who has bested dozens of women in combat. And honestly, all those fights were dull. So here I am on this road looking for someone better than me. Okay, let's see. Hmm, you might be less valuable after I win. We could get him to join our court. He is loyal and... He also has 15 prowess. Not bad. He's brave, wrathful, and paranoid. He's an elusive shadow. Interesting. You know what? Yeah, I think we'll try and beat him and recruit him to our entourage if possible. Let's do it. And we win the fight just like that. And we arrive back home and we've become a veteran traveler at this stage. So we're going to head back inside and then having a look at you, we may very well want to try and turn you into a ghoul. Hopefully that doesn't get rid of our scheme here though. Let's have a look at that. Ghoulify. Um, all right. We need to wait just a little bit and then we will be able to try and ghoulify you. I, I do still think you're going to make a good ghoul. And now that we've arrived back, it looks like there are a number of things that we can do. We can host Elysium. We can hold court. I think we probably want to have a look at holding court sooner rather than later. We still don't know what's going on here. That success chance has risen up again, unfortunately. Oh, and having a look at the royal court here, yes, we do have that banner that we can go and put up, don't we? Yes, the Sardinian war banner. Let's get that up on the wall now. And I suppose we could look at holding court now. I do want to hold Elysium as well, but the court shall come first. And Pix is at the front here, cradling a woolen bundle. With a grin, he pulls back the swaddling, revealing a pair of squinting eyes above a lolling tongue. A puppy. He can hardly keep the excitable furball in his arms. A gift from the finest sighthound litter I've seen in some time. He says between face licks. You must take advantage and expand your kennels, my lady. Our kennels will have no competition. Wow, that's super expensive. Um, hmm. That's a lot of court grandeur. Who's a good pup? We would get a pet dog. Cats are superior companions. Hmm. I mean, I would love to go for this option in general for the court grandeur. Also, all members of the House of Event will be able to potentially adopt a puppy. I think we take the hit. Pex, not a bad idea. Yeah, we're in debt right now, but I feel like that could work in our favor in the long run. But yes, we are unfortunately down some gold here now, and it looks like we have a monster to deal with now. A haggard looking peasant now stands in front of me. My lady, I beg for your help. A monster prowls the forest of Fogier. Kin and cattle and farmers alike, few have seen it, but the mangled remains of its poor victims leave no doubt. It's clearly a huge bear, as bloodthirsty as few have ever seen. Please send your strongest hunters and save us from its voracious jaws. Let's see, um, give them some gold. My personal champions will slay the beast. I think there's a high chance that they'll succeed. Garcienda would be the one to go out there. Uh, I shall fell the beast myself. I mean, yeah, if we can. I feel like that would be fantastic. We will look at doing that. Uh, and then finally, Velislava is here, proposing a survey of all the counties we own. How much would that cost? A lot. It would cost 265 gold, and it would also take several months before that's done. We can't afford that, unfortunately, <laughs> after the investment we just made. Sorry, that is unfortunate there. My business here is done. So let's see what's going on with that hunt then. Uh, right. First of all, it seems like we have the dog to deal with. Now, mm, amiable Holdfast. Let's go with Holdfast. A good name for her. Yes, a great name. Now, I don't know if we needed to um, start a hunt for that to work. But first of all, we need to deal with Helena of Troy. I don't think, yeah, no, we don't have another blood surge opportunity here. So a 56% chance, maybe we actually still have our stewardship high. It is, it is. Okay, that's good. So rouse the blood, exert my will, and no. <laughs> <laughs> That's unfortunate. No such luck there. No such luck. She is still unlanded at the moment. She isn't too far away at the moment. So we still can interact with her, but we may have to just try and find options elsewhere. Oh, and let's not forget, we do want to have a look at Goulifying Joffrey here. Yes, a 75% chance that you'll become our thrall. Let's hope that works out. The monster off of gear. All the preparations are completed. I set out with a selected group of guards to face the infamous monster. 
It doesn't take us long to find it. A clear trail of blood leads us straight to the creature's abode. I was already informed of what to expect, but when the massive bear finally stands in front of me, I can't help but shiver. Face me, you foul beast. We have a 100% chance to succeed here. Um, we also gain some experience in Venerator, and there's a 5% chance we get the nickname The Hunter, which would, that would be fun. Let's see how we go. I don't think we got the nickname there, but we did get prestige, and you know what? We got some hunting experience. That's good. Oh, let's have a look at Melancholy here as well, because we do have Fortitude. We can pick up a new uh, ability here, a new discipline. Fortify the Inner Facade. So, Hostile Scheme Resistance goes up by 20, which I liked it a lot. Defy Bane. Okay, increases murder scheme resistance. I feel like that might be more important right now. By preparing themselves with an expenditure of power, the vampire can make themselves temporarily resistant to fire and sunlight, as well as other grievous wounds that would threaten them with the final death. When using toughness, the vampire is immune to maiming during large battles. Okay, I like that. We will be trying to use toughness more often, just in general. Yeah, so we activate toughness here. With this active, your character is protected by the supernatural power of fortitude. Every time you would take damage, they instead soak the damage. If they succeed, they will not suffer the wound. Succeed or fail, a rouse check will be performed. So we're going to activate toughness, so that's just going to be on, always. So that should help protect Missy, because, uh, yeah, this, this is still not over yet. Ah, okay, and yet again... Pex has succeeded, but it is just for the single county. We may have to go for it. I don't think we're going to be able to go to war while we are in debt, though. That's the only issue. But we could potentially... We could try and get other claims at the same time. I just don't know how much of a chance there is of us actually getting everything all at once. I think we're going to try it for a little bit longer, and oh boy. A breach of the masquerade. Well then, we could just make you forget, which I think is what we're probably going to do here. Yeah, we get a little hungrier, that's okay. And we'll forgive you, Duchess, for a favor. Yes, let's do that, because then we can go and say, hey, you can do something about that. We can demand payments here, and we're gonna do that. 75, excellent, and we'll also demand that payment from you as well. We do have that uh, wonderful little uh, blood bond that we set up before we released her from our jail. Ooh. And intimidation tactics. I take Dima down to the dungeons here. Tell everyone about me? Yes, let's do that. Let's lose some stress, gain some dread. Where is your dread at now, Missy? It's nearly 100%. That's uh, considerable. And yet again, we are suspecting that Verpus has someone else. Do you have another Verpus? And no, <laughs> he is not going to be honest with us. We know that they both have someone else. Surely they do. And of course, if we are to ransom the ones that have betrayed us, we would be able to get a fair amount of gold, but we're going to hold off doing that for a little while longer. And another scheme. Okay, let's see. Someone is plotting to kill our courtier. So someone's probably trying to hunt you, but you are kindred, so interesting. We must stop the villain behind this. What are the chances of that succeeding? Let's see, it's not very high. And of course, our loyal retainer, your service will be rewarded. You shall become our ghoul, excellent. Let's do that thing, it's gonna cost us a little bit of prestige. You now have 19 prowess, which is great. And we could see if we could maybe set you up with one of our other ghouls here, which I don't think any of them are available right now. Well then, that's right, stay as you are. Oh, and it looks like we can demand even more payments now which is just fantastic. They are rolling in. Oh, stone of glass. As I struggle to make out the tiny letters on the scroll before me, I feel a headache building once more. Why do scribes insist on writing such small symbols? Seems that Missy is having a little bit of a hard time reading things at the moment. We could get some lifestyle experience and Pex would get a weak hook on us, which, you know, that's not so bad. I'm okay with that. We we do mostly trust picks. Okay, and it looks like yet again, we're gonna be going for the county and I, I think we're just gonna go for it. Just the county as it is for now. And looking at Manele, he has already been fighting in wars. So I think, I think this should be over pretty quickly. We have the numbers, we have the skill, let's land. Oh, and they've already started the siege down here. 
I'm fine with us starting this siege here, because I think we are going to be faster than they are, although we can always break it if we think we need to. We do have another perk that we could look at though. Phlegmatic. Deep memories or conditioning. Let's see. Deep memories. You can now change all personality traits and the sexuality of your ghouls and herd. That seems like far too much control, but I guess kindred will be kindred, right? And then conditioning. By dominating a person several times within 10 years using a command to reduce free will, the vampire can eventually make them an ideal servant, giving them a strong dominate hook that cannot be resisted, can be maintained with further dominate commands. I think we'll pick up conditioning to begin with. Uh, it's going to be close here. I think we are just going to go and station the besiegers and then march with Missy's troops here. We should win with the numbers that we've got and we've already got them breaking the siege. Let's see if we can catch them here in the mountains. Okay, I mean it's difficult. Let's just actually move back to where we were. I think that's going to be the safer option. And let's just merge our armies because we have won the siege. Excellent. And we're now controlling the area. Uh, so we could just kind of continue on to some of the other areas around here. I'm fine with us doing that. Let's have them just wait in the mountains. Their supplies are going down. I think that this is a much better option for us. Oh, and they're moving. They're moving on. Uh, where to? Maybe our own territory. Yeah, they're going to try and siege Rome. Okay, well, hey, good luck with that. Escaped? Akos has escaped. We should have put him in the dungeon. Okay, I mean, we can just imprison him again because he is a known criminal. Curse you. Curse you, Akos. Um, let's have a look. Imprison. Okay, he will rise up in rebellion. Uh, well, I guess it's finally time. Um, once this war is finished, we are going to deal with Akos. Finally. And of course he has created an independence faction against us immediately. Of course he has. Honestly, I'm kind of tempted to just let him go independent. Take the territory down here. Because we don't actually want it anymore. And that would leave him completely at the, um, at the hands of the followers of Set. Very tempted to do that. But at the same time, I don't think you should take kindly to the betrayal that she's had at the hands of Akos. Oh, and they are actually kind of succeeding at some of the sieges over here, so I think we're going to follow them across. Even if it is expensive, we'll do it. And hey, I think that that's the last lifestyle experience that we need. It is apostate. We can pick it up. That's great. I think at this stage, we'll probably move back towards stewardship. That, or we could go back into martial. You know what? Yes, we are going to go back into martial, and I think we are going to go for chivalry yet again. Okay, sail on, Missy. Oh, run away? Hold fast? <gasps> Our dog. No. Be patient. Wait to see if the dog returns to us at sea. Did it dive off of the boat? Oh dear. Okay. No. Landolf was skulking around at sea? Did you steal my dog? Landolf. <sighs> okay. All right. We're going to track down that kindred at some point. No doubt. Missy, let's see if we can win this fight here though. Oh, okay. And that's that. We know who was trying to kill Melissa now, Camilla. And to think that so many of our own court would have sided with our ancient enemy. The Chattering Fiend. Well then, we're rightfully allowed to try and imprison him. I don't think that we will be able to do that because he is not in our territory. We can't just, um, yeah, get him that way. We can challenge him to a fight for sure, which he might actually accept. 56 prowess though, it would be, it would be close. I'm going to challenge him. I'm going to challenge him. 100%. Let's see if that has dropped, though. Yep. Okay, so all of our vassals, we are going to deal with them after after this. Uh, we obviously need to deal with Akos before anything else, though. So we have an order of operation to follow. And it looks like Camilla has appeared here in Rome. Single combat. What are we going to do here? I will drink you dry. I mean, that sounds great just going straight for it. Using your potent powers, you will quickly drink a portion of Camilla's blood. Okay, um, our hunger will decrease by three. His hunger will increase by three. Has happened. Has he tried to feed from us? He has. Okay, our blood went down. Okay, so I think that's what he started off with. Wounding me is not easy. I mean, that's also a good option, but no, I think we're gonna go with I will drink you dry. And 
we have a new animal perk available uh, after drinking him there, I lunge forward for the neck, hoping to exsanguinate my opponent in a matter of seconds. My foe uses their animal form to jump at me fangs first. My form is decent with some lapses. Camilla's stance is formidable. I've yet to open my opponent's guard. But hey, we are fully, fully feared now at this stage. So, my fangs will be enough to deal with you. I will strike the earth itself. High chance of success here and a low chance of, you know, injury. Wounding me is not easy. I think we're going to do the ground strike. Earth shock. I strike the earth. I make the floor itself tremble under us. Camilla retaliates with a smooth flowing series of quick slashes and powerful cleaves, each strike forcing me back a little more. My form is good with only small errors. Camilla's stance is formidable. I've yet to open up my opponent's guard at all. So we could go and start drinking from him yet again, which would put him into a frenzy. I kind of like the idea of doing it. Yes, we will feast. Let's go for it, Missy. I will drink you dry. I lunge forward for the neck, hoping to exsanguinate our enemy. And he does the same thing, sinking his sharpened fangs into Missy's neck. <laughs> our hunger is good. I have no idea what hunger he is at now. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to see that specifically. Oh, he's frenzied. He's straight up in a frenzy now. We have drawn most, if not all, of the blood out of his body now. So, what comes next? Bite, bite, bite. We could rouse the blood to become stronger. I don't know if we want to do that. I'll show you how to bear fangs or strike, parry, riposte. A flurry of rapid attacks. I think we go for it. And we win. We win. My fangs move fast as lightning and strike as hard as sundered stone. Blow by blow, I beat my opponent into a bloody, confused submission, hammering him into the ground with the fury only the power of the blood can lend me. When all that's left is a quivering pile of bleeding man, I wonder if I've gone too far. Then Camilla coughs, hard enough to lose his grip on his sword, and I allow myself a sigh of relief. I mean, we should have straight up killed him. We should have just tried to kill him there. Ah, okay. We win. We win. And we lose a bit of stress and he gains critical stress and man, he is messed up. <laughs> wow. We really did a number on you, huh? Yeah, severely injured. Severe health penalty. I mean, he's still fine because, you know, he's, uh, he's kindred. But we really, really messed him up there. Uh, find a hiding place. Oh, he's hiding. Go on a journey to learn the exact location of this torpid vampire. He's in torpor? We're going on a journey. Hell yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. I mean, he's fifth generation, so if we, you know, we're not going to get much from doing it, but just the revenge alone. Um, yes, we're going to try and see if we can find him. What a journey it shall be. <laughs> okay, let's finish this fight here against Minelli. How is that looking? How was that victory? I mean, pretty good as far as we can see. It's probably going to be worth us just trying to just wait here for a moment or two, recover some of our troops, and then see if we can maybe uh, pick him off. He might be going back to his own territory, though. It's a little difficult to know. If we start to move over here, we might get a sign. Okay. Oh, boy. The Kingdom of Africa is declaring war against us. Okay. And obviously, they are... Um, where are you right now? You were here before. I'm confused. Okay, so you're attacking from here? Within the territory of the followers of Set. I see. So you're just a single... You're effectively a count. Yet you've declared that it's a holy war. So we're going to have others jumping in on it for sure. But I mean, the territory here that they're trying to gain is a territory that I'm okay with us losing. <laughs> I mean... We could, we could just offer up Akos's territory. Be like, yeah, okay, I'm fine with that. Um, if we were to surrender, we could offer a white piece as well. Surrendering, okay, so what would happen if we do this here? Their equitium, their further will go down, which is okay, because we're kind of looking at moving on from that anyway. Um, I don't think this is going to be too bad for us. All of our glory hound vassals lose 20 of opinion of us for 10 years disapproving a defeat i i'm okay with this surrender i am indeed that is a defeat that i am okay with oh and would you look at that the independence faction has been disbanded what happened to akos well he doesn't have that territory anymore is he still considered to be a part of our court 
Well, if we have a look at relationships and then rivals, we should be able to find Akos along here somewhere. Are you not even a rival of ours anymore? I legitimately cannot find Akos. I don't know, um, I don't know what happened to him. <laughs> And unfortunately, we are going to be going into a little bit of debt here because I, I do believe we are going to have to go back across here. And OK, no, not sure where their army is. I really am not. And it looks like our air has shifted here. That's OK. Oh, you're down here. OK, that's where you are. All right, let's go finish this thing. And I mean, if we capture you, that would be fantastic. Doesn't look like we captured anyone there, though. So let's just keep the sieges going for now. I know it's not always the wisest move to do that because, you know, it's going to be costing us. We're having to kind of chase you around some mountains here. But with every fight, there is a chance that we might actually end up um, capturing Manele. Gosh, we are really losing some numbers over here. But we still far outnumber the enemy. And we did manage to capture someone. I mean, sixth generation, you don't actually have any territory at the moment. And with 29 prowess, if we could negotiate your release and recruit you, that would be great. Um, let's see, though. Let's be smart about this. I think we do want to kind of continue to blood bond our prisoners uh, before we release them. That just seems to be a good option. So... Let's try that again. We're going to negotiate that release. We are going to recruit you. And there we are. Release you, um, release you from prison there. And you really are not that fond of us. That's fine. You're going to make a heck of a soldier. And yeah, I think the war has actually gone on long enough. Let's go enforce our demands now. So be it. And let's disband those troops. So it does look like we can actually hang on to some extra domains at the moment. So we could try and hold on to some of the territory around here, but nothing really is grasping us as of yet and having a look at you marcellus you can oh you're not gonna be able to take any more territory so let's have a look at granting us to someone else then someone else of relevance garcienda you have been our personal champion and our bodyguard for many years you are a ghoul that has served us for a long time and i would like to try and continue that if we can let's go grant you this title here okay you now account congratulations I think at the same time, we could start trying to uh, fabricate claims on some of the other counties that are around here, if possible. Oh, yes. Okay. We do need to deal with our vassals now. It looks like they're trying to ransom themselves off. Okay. So, all right. The plot is over, but we still have prisoners. Prisoners that we most certainly need to deal with. You, you're, you're just immortal. You can just hang out in here for now. That's totally fine. But Duke Stefan, Masha here, and Trifosa. Let's see. I think we are going to blood bond them all before we release them we'll blood bond them and then i think we'll also try and negotiate the release so if we say ransom and we say ransom oh, i was going to offer to ransom you for a hook but 100 gold that's also not that bad and we will still have some kind of a hook on you so yes we shall release you for now and we're going to do the same thing over here to masha we will blood bond you and uh we didn't get hungrier in the process then so that's great 25 to be able to release you okay and then trifosa blood bond and then we shall ransom you uh i'd say 25 oh you're also considering that proposal okay there we go and now we'll allow you uh to leave here for now let's see if that works out okay yes Wonderful, wonderful. Now, because we have those hooks on them as well, we can demand payments from them, which we are most certainly going to be doing. So let's take the gold from the people that we can. Trifosa, it's going to take a little while longer before she's able to pay us back what she owes us now that we have that blood bond on her. Oh, would you look at that? Duke Stefan has created an independence faction against us. Shock horror. Well, that's okay. We do still want to try and keep some of these older kindred around here because they're useful. They are also dangerous. And I think that Missy acknowledges that. She is playing with fire, most certainly. But, you know, she's been getting better at not getting burnt. And I am thinking it's probably going to be worth us trying to pick up a animalism uh, discipline at some point because we've got a few different perks that we can unlock here. Protean is fun. Serpentus? Might be a little bit more difficult for us to learn. Analyzm in general is also just super useful. But for now, we are focusing on this journey here. As yet another scheme is at court. That's okay. We're, we're, we're fine with our friends hunting the mortals there. As long as they're not our mortals directly. And Fionadu is here to pay us homage. 
Wonderful. We will take that coin. Thank you. The court grandeur and the prestige. Lovely. And it looks like we can host an Elysium. It's been a while since we've done so. It's going to cost a lot to do it. My gosh, it's been getting more and more expensive to run these Elysiums. I think we have to go for it. And you know what? Actually, before we do that, let's go and adopt a, uh, adopt a pup. Hold fast too. Yes. <laughs> I think we'll let our gold build up just a little longer before we consider another Elysium. Oh, and looking at our royal court here, what do we have going on? Velislava, the criminal, is here, who is avoided by almost everyone on account of their wicked faith. My failure to condemn and continue proximity to this irredeemable fiend is perceived as open tolerance. That's okay. It's not our place to judge. Oh, that's a lot of loss of court grandeur. It's time to arrest this beast. I cannot host you any more, champion. Well, we can't do that, can we? I think we're just going to have to lose the grandeur. Harbor criminals. I mean, we and ourselves are a criminal. Velislava has actually been loyal to us. She has been creating problems, for sure, but she has been loyal. So, it is not our place to judge. Oh, okay. And it looks like... The scheme that we have going on here is between the caitiff that we have brought to our court but haven't actually recruited yet. How much would it cost to recruit you? 85? Honestly, it's worth it. We'll recruit you. Um, we are not going to throw you in jail at the moment. You were trying to kill our other slightly weaker kindred. Let us not expose her, though. Melissa acknowledges strength where she sees it. Oh, sins of the sire... Okay, is this another child of Landulf? It is. It is. My gosh, my lips curl as I glance upon my walk around Trivoli to find my nemesis, Landulf II, hurrying along the street towards me. Our rivalry has been particularly vicious as of late because I'm pretty sure he stole our dog while we were out at sea. Um, the two of us exchange verbal barbs at any opportunity. I fully expect some putrid nonsense to be spouted in my general direction, but instead he flounces on past. It's only then that I notice someone in his toe. I recognize them. Duke Landolf II's, or rather not Duke anymore, just Landolf II's childer. He smiles at me somewhat with the merest hint of a raised eyebrow before hurrying after his sire. I watch the pair continue down the road somewhat startled. What was this all about? Now, I do... I, you know what? Hmm. I think we continue the tradition. Yes. Let's respond in kind. Oh, and a challenge to a board game. It could lead to a little bit of stress, but you are our friend. Sure. I think we'll start off with intrigue. Let's go for a stewardship challenge now. And back to intrigue. And stewardship once again. And we win the game. Wonderful. A roar of triumph. Excellent. Very good. Let us say we'll love to play again. Leading to us potentially becoming friends. Actually, yeah, a very good chance. A 99% chance that we became friends. That's good. I'm glad to see it. Oh, okay. And we can pick up a new choleric ability. Let's see. Fist of Cain. You gain an increased chance to severely wound enemy characters in battle. I like the sound of that. Unfortunately, our court grandeur has gone down somewhat. Oh, would you look at that. We have another Bruja tournament that we can partake in. We are going to join that. Now, how far do we have to travel? It's not actually all that far at all. And we've already visited kind of everything around here. So I think we're just going to go straight for it. Activity starts on the 21st of May. So yes, we will make haste. And it was a very quick trip there. Oh, and Viorica, I like the look at the moment. What are you channeling? Incorporeal form. The vampire assumes an incorporeal state, not unlike a ghost, able to pass freely through objects and rendered immune to physical damage. Well, that's really good. It drops her prowess, but immune to damage. Very, very nice. Um, so you've been hosting Dario for several weeks. Okay, well that's good. Dario has improved her opinion of us, which was already pretty high to begin with. So yes, now that we are here, what are we going to focus on? Recreation. Yep, all the way. And we're going to try pretty hard, I think, at almost all of these different um, tasks that we have here. And it looks like we have yet another claim. Wonderful. See it done, Pix. And I think we'll immediately get him fabricating a claim on somewhere else in the territory here. 
Yes, that will do. And so, for the archery, we shall give it our all. Yet it was not good enough. Glory to the victor. Now, the heralding. Let's just try and lose a little bit of stress here, I think. Oh, and Verpus was the winner. Congratulations. Now, with the wrestling, we are definitely going to be giving it our all. Putting us into critical stress? That's okay. We'll deal with all that stress eventually. And oh dear, Dante is scheming back at court. That's fine. That's right. He's allowed to do that. <laughs> And we have won the wrestling. Fantastic, Melissa. Now on to the boxing. Yet again, we're going to give it our all. There is a high chance that we are going to get super stressed out by all of this, but we're just going to have to try and make it. We're getting pretty close here, though. Oh, dear. And some sparring. Okay, do your thing. I'll just watch. It will reduce our chances, or, hmm, we could reduce her chances to win, I think, here. Rather than trying to actually make her better, we would also lose some stress here as well. So yes, let's do that. And Melissa comes out on top here as well. There's a lot of prestige and gold and also trait experience at the same time. Now, with the board games, I think we have a chance to just take it easy here again. We have won, just taking it easy in the past. However, this time we aren't so lucky. Now we have the horse race. Um, we could give it our all yet again. We are pretty stressed out at the moment though. Let's see how we fare. Ah, ghouled horses aren't allowed during the horse race. There will be tests, as usual, to make sure that no one is trying to cheat. This does give us the opportunity, though, as we notice one of the unguarded stables on the road to our own. With a little bribe, the stable hand and some of our own blood, we could transform one of the other contestants' horses into a ghoul, thus ensuring their disqualification in the process. Yeah, why not? Why not? And unfortunately, it is not enough for us to win. Glory to the victor. And we end the tournament. And Missy heads home with a lot of stress, but a lot of prestige and a lot of gold. Oh, and on the way back, our journey is interrupted by the sounds of tearing flesh and gnashing jaws and the desperate cries of a woman about to meet her end. The noise is so horrific that it must have come from the depths of a dungeon. Attempting to trace the source, we find a desperate champion struggling with a wild wolf. Her blade is wedged between the beast's jaws, but her grip is beginning to falter. Let's have a look at you there. Yeah, that prowess ain't great. You're pretty wounded. I don't think you've got a good chance. We could get Andreak to move in and assist. He is the champion of the hind. We could also try and help ourselves here. Um, there is a chance to become wounded and die. We also gain stress because we are sadistic. Uh, but we are also brave. We can't afford to get any more stress at this point. We will not risk our life. We will walk away, gaining a little bit of stress, but not as much as we would have there, going against our own convictions. But we have made it back in one piece, back to Rome, and there are so many things that we can do here. Yet for now, we will wait. We will wait to see if this works and <gasps> rejection. How terrible. And Countess Katerina is here to shower us in gifts as ever. We are grateful. And now, stressed more than ever from expending willpower, a little bit of the stress that Missy had at the start of today's episode is gone. The one that sought her head was Camilla, a kindred that she has sent into torpor, and now she seeks his hiding place so that she may finally bring an end to an old rival. And as for those that plotted her own death, she mercifully spared them, after of course getting them addicted to her blood. And yes, they may plot, they may still plan against her, but Melissa has the comfort of knowing that she still holds power over them. That she, a mere caitiff, has risen up to rule over all of Rome, and now stretches her influence out across what was the Sea of Shadows, with ambitions of gaining the title of Empress, the Baronies of Avalon, should start to take note, for Melissa Bevent is coming. And Legionnaires, I ask you all here at the end of today's episode, if you enjoyed, please consider leaving a comment or a like to let me know if you enjoyed the show. As for now, I have been Rykon, you have all been awesome, and until next time, stay tuned.